apparently this person made a post about like the games industry and how like people can fuck off and stuff hey folks i'm ray i work in the gaming industry in a ux user experience and uh, r d which is a uh, research and development plus game production producer basically producers are the ones that make sure that uh, gets done i worked on various software and hardware for xbox I now work as an independent media producer and had the privilege of working on Dota International's 2023 and other gaming media projects. So we have here like Ori and the Will of the Wisps and uh, another game. I don't know what this is, but very clearly showing like, you know, I've, I, I'm very well seasoned in like the video game industry, which this does seem like it is pretty well, I mean, Xbox independent media. The thing is, is like, I don't know, it's kind of hard to like actually know what they mean by this but this is pretty big like working on dota 2023 internationals but like what does it mean you know and then we have here a response by thomas Mahler who says i'm the director behind both ori games and i don't know who you are or how you're affiliated with ori a bunch of like women developers apparently dogpiled this dude at the end um and then here he made a post apparently like hey Alyssa, you're apparently a journalist from kotaku so I'm guessing you haven't worked in actual game development yet. Um, I don't know. She did say that she did. So um, we'll see. Oh, wait, who's Alyssa? Oh, that's someone else. He's re he's replying to someone else. Oh, God, this thread. On it. Oh, man, this, this sucks, man. I hate when this happens. It makes it like so hard to figure out what's going on. Dude, I'm not gonna lie. I don't even know who this is. Is this supposed to be a video game person? Oh, the come fight me physically. The one. Oh, OK. The one from the video. Oh, OK, that's bad. That is really bad. Okay, well, anyway, you're a dickhead, okay? <laughs> Thomas Mahler says, I don't know who you are. Maybe you forgot. Mahler sometimes argued with veterans that he brought in, and he changed his mind about decisions that they made and would overrule them. Mahler would also forget about agreements and then argue for the opposite to happen, and that impacted the work of multiple, multiple, multiple developers said. Do you want to know what causes all the strife in a lot of the game shit? Is you have a small, dedicated team. And they're really passionate and like, I love this. Like, I want to make this game. This is the game I want to make the game of my dreams. Company gets bigger. Company gets bigger and bigger. And what, what happens when your company gets bigger? You have to hire more people. So who's the first person you would think to hire? You're a new video game CEO. This is like the, your first game project. Your designers are not cutting it because they just, there's not enough of them. They're stretched thin. You need to hire more people. Who's the first people that you hire? You're going to hire random ass people? Or are you going to hire someone who said, I've been working in the game industry for 10 years. You're going to hire people who said, I've worked in the gaming industry for 10 years. Because to you, that means that they have the clout, they have the chops to handle what you need, right? But let me tell you something. That just means that they're bringing the cancer to you half of the time. All right. And half of the time, these people come in here and mega big dick like guys i've guys i've been working on you know the new i've been working on assassin's creed or i've been working on halo or i've been working on something like that so i know what i'm talking about and they come in there and they don't know what the fuck that they're talking about and they're dude, dude they're they're so annoying you know and i'm not saying that's all of them but like there's definitely people like that and dude they fuck everything up i'm telling you man i have seen these these sorts of people single-handedly destroy games single-handedly destroy games waste company resources to the point of no return single-handedly i've i have i have seen this myself with my own eyes um so this is this is a real a real thing so you know arguing with veterans i mean th just because they're like a veteran and just because you're hiring someone from another company doesn't mean that they know anything in the end what should matter is like what's the argument you know uh hey Alyssa, uh, you're apparently a journalist from kotaku so i'm guessing you haven't worked in actual game development yet. let me explain the thing that you posted about which i was guessing is from that hit piece from a years back yes i'm guilty of what's stated in that image and that's okay because that is a normal creative process it is you should you should be able to disagree with people and then in the end what wins is who has the better argument it's not who has the the bigger clout does that make sense when people try to pull like like a bigger clout argument they have no argument when it comes to like the actual mechanics of like the game the, the actual design the design is king the design should always win like who has the better argument for design not who has the most clout or who worked on you know the bigger dick project i think so yeah it is a normal part of the creative process you should like you know anybody should 
should be able to say like, you know, I don't think this is a good idea and here's why. And and the here's why is the important part. We brought lots of ve veterans into Moon because generally great people want to, to get an opportunity to work on great projects and that's our uh, goal at Moon. We always set to create the kind of games we love to play ourselves and that fills some hole in the market because for some reason these holes haven't been filled yet. Hey, that's what we're doing with Angel Sword TTRPG, rpg.angelsword.com. And so we're incredibly passionate about what we do. With a great talent comes a lot of enthusiasm and passion, which absolutely leads to arguments because ultimately everyone is working hard to get their vision to the game. But also everyone at Moon understands that we're working together as a team. So the point of these arguments is to try to convince each other why this exact dude, this is exactly it. Is to it is to convince each other why this or that solution would be the best thing for the game that we're making, because this is what matters right here. Is this the best thing for the game that we're making? Most of the times, the beauty behind these arguments is that everybody gets a chance to contribute. And more often than not, the actual solution will be one that is ultimately everyone has contributed to because we're dealing with very complex issues all the time. Yes, game design is very complex. Um, and a lot of the problems you guys see in game development, game design, like especially with balance, a lot of that, that issue is the fact that these interactions in the game are incredibly complex. And when you, and when you look at something only from one angle, and you don't actually take the time to sit and analyze like what the problem is, you end up treating a symptom of the cause. And that is where the disease starts is when game developers treat a symptom instead of the actual root cause of the problem, because it becomes band-aid after band-aid after band-aid. And then they don't understand, you know, the side effects of these band-aids that they have like some other side effect that breaks another thing. And now you have another problem. And then you have to like do the same thing to that. And you start band-aiding that other problem, which causes more problems. And if you don't understand the, the root design issue that is causing your problem, it's going to be endless band-aids forever and you're never going to make anyone feel good. And in the end, everyone feels bad. Um, anyway, most of the times the beauty behind these arguments is that everybody gets a chance to contribute more. Okay. Uh, and the complex problems uh, often need complex solutions. It's often a chaotic process, but it's controlled chaos. And yes, absolutely every now and then I have to put my foot down and set the direction because you have to, this is what a leader has to do. Absolutely. Because I'm the game director and ultimately it's my responsibility to ensure that everyone knows where things are heading and the decisions get made. Yeah, some people, ha sometimes you, sometimes you get hammered and that's, that's just how it is. You know what I mean? Like the, it, it's like you're playing, uh, you're playing a game like, uh, you know, like Counter-Strike or something like the in-game leader has to make a call. And at that point, when the call is made, you just, you, everyone follows it, right? Regardless. And, and, you know, sometimes it's the wrong call. And yeah, it's, uh, it's also happened that I agreed to certain decisions, play tested more and changed the direction after. Again, to me, this is a normal product process since things get clearer and clearer. This guy knows what he's talking about. Actually, this is, this is real game design stuff. This is, this is solid. Uh, to me, this is how the creative work happens. It can be painful. Uh, but like my job, like any director is to understand what's going on and to make sure the right decisions get made. Even if some work might get rendered useless in the process, because you never know, uh, game design is always about testing. Oh, test, test often, test fast. Um, see here, even Miyamoto is guilty of that. Probably popping Miyamoto in there because he's like considered a legendary, uh, legendary S tier, uh, uh, S tier game designer, SSR. A few years back, we hired some folks that we didn't really fit into our culture. So we had to part ways with them. And then this article happened. <laughs> Yeah, because, you know, because because then if you if people don't fit in and then you have to like part ways and of course they're going to talk shit. Obviously, they're going to talk shit. Uh, it wasn't a great feeling to see some ex moon folks talk about bad behind their backs, but ultimately just made it clear that these folks should have worked at. Oh, this guy is a legend. This guy is a legend. Ultimately, it just made it clear that these folks shouldn't have worked in the first place with us. And we hope they're happier now wherever they're landed. I don't know why you're out there cursing, uh, cursing out game developers and what your whole deal is, but I hope that can give you some insight on the creative process and its messiness and beauty. I hope you have, dude. <laughs> I hope you have a nice day. Yours, dickhead. That's actually so funny. That's legendary. Oh my god. No, this guy actually knows what he's, ta he's talking about. This is all legit. This is all 100% right. Of course, you're going to make mistakes because game design, the game development is a process. It's g game development is not like I, I picture some shit up in my mind and then it happens and it's all good. It's never like that. It's always a process of like, it's, it's, I have an idea. I think this idea is fun. 
and then you throw it into the test chamber you're testing it you're testing it oh actually that's not that fun but you know what some parts are kind of fun about it like can we take what was fun about it and then like fix what's not fun about it take it back out go back to the lab you you hammer it out a bit you you hammer it out you come up with more hypothesis and then you throw it back in the test chamber and you check it you check it oh, okay where can we improve back to the lab and that's kind of like how how game development is it's not it's not a it's not a, i i i have the 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 epiphany from god and i know exactly how it turns out it, it isn't like that it's much like science it's it's a it's a it's a you have a hypothesis you test it you and then and then you you iterate on that after you know oh, okay that it didn't work out that didn't work out what can i do what can i do better and then you just over and over again until that's how you get like the best thing right uh, obviously there's like a design philosophy that really does come into play like do you have a good design philosophy in the first place uh because if your de design philosophy is kind of bad then you know obviously like a bad input is going to lead to a bad output regardless of what you do right so uh, uh, that's not 100 percent true sometimes it does have a good good result but it's it's kind of rare it's a little bit more rare there and then and then the problem with that is now you have a and this is the worst case scenario is when you have a designer who comes up with gold he 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 puts all the shit he puts all the lead into the machine and then out of the other side is gold and they take the gold but they don't know what to do with it because they don't have the philosophy so 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 that 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 gold just starts to turn back into lead like as, as soon as they take it out um as soon as they take it out and start to like kind of mess with it a little bit more it starts to like it starts to turn and uh you see that happening a lot in in the game uh industry and this is why you see a lot of games they come out and you're like man this game is fucking amazing this is the best game ever i love this game and then like two patches later it's shit how many times have you guys seen that chat game comes out this is the best game ever two patches later game shit how many times it's happened more than i can count um anyway that's that's my take on that let's watch like a video so i can get like a more like a full idea on it um so let's let's check this this video out by uh hero hey i actually watch hero hey a lot um off, off stream I, I haven't seen this one yet though wow. the comment section of i saw people laughing at the word inclusivity wait 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 wait, 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 wait. you saw the 509 volume up the other day with that dei defending influencer who also like worked at xbox or something oh this well, one cool, cool. all right update got it. on that situation also okay. quick side note it turns out asman gold reacted to that video that was pretty cool glad he enjoyed that <laughs> So really quick, this was the context. She made this thread all upset about the discourse. The discourse being gamers criticizing companies in gaming and also criticizing DI consultation DI co companies. All of that being something that once uh, again, uh, she seems very upset about. In my coverage, I gave a reasonable response and provided evidence as to why a number of her points she are just falling apart. Jesus, falling. Rest hold on, hold on. I, I, I want to see this. Sorry. I want to see like the whole thing. Is it this one right here? In all caps. This woman writes, the discourse is BS. Shut the heck up a thread. And indeed, she's made a seven part thread here that's now collected over 500,000 views in the initial tweet. And it's now going kind of viral in gaming circle. And in mm -hmm. her thread, she comes off extremely angry, very unhappy with gamers for having the audacity to criticize corrupt corporations in the game. I mean, they're just, they're just unhappy people. Gaming in this God, that's such a nice gun. Such a nice guy. I'm, I'm, I'm so glad okay. I have it. She seems to really want to <laughs> defend those corpos. She also attempts to defend DI consultation companies. And spoiler alert, her claims are very easily disproven. I'm a little jelly of that suppressor, so though. She's taken an extremely I need a suppressor, guys. Here. We'll get to all that stuff. It should be a fun one. First, I can't a justify $1,000, though. That's so much. Who this even is. With 22,000 followers, she's on Twitch and YouTube and... And her bio says she's UX R&D in game and media. Hey, new folks, I'm Ray. Yeah, what's up, Emily? I work in the gaming industry in UX R&D plus game production. I worked on okay. various software and hardware for Xbox. I now work as an independent media producer and had the privilege of working on the... So yeah, yeah again, like we talked about this earlier, uh, UX is user experience. Um, it's it's basically like, uh, does it, honestly, it, it can mean a lot nowadays, but when I see like UX, I think of it as like, are the menus good? Um, so an example of a uh, bad UX would be Hunt Show Now. Internationals 2023 and other gaming media projects. Not okay, good. In that context, let's return to her <laughs> Men Menu's not good. ...thread and see what all she has to say. She begins with part one saying, DEI consultation companies don't bully studios into changing creative direction. They act as resources to help creatives portray a lived experience. The Northman is an example of this. Okay, so first of all, usually when people are talking about DI consultation companies, they're often talking about that in reference to video games, mm -hmm. which in her next thread, 
she also talks about video games. So it's odd that her example of DI consultation. Can, can these guys hire consultants for like making the game good? What is this? Can they hire? Can they studios. hire like better There's consultants for games? Well, whatever. Okay. Game Just development, kind of game game design, like live design instead of all the shit. No one cares. Me. Allow me to address the main point, which is DEI consultation companies don't bully studios into changing creative direction. Yeah. So Ray is absolutely incorrect here. There is on air evidence of, for example, Kim Belair of Sweet Baby Inc. advocating for creatives to essentially extort, to threaten others at their workplace, uh -huh. into putting part of the budget towards consultation firms. Um, if you're a creative working in AAA, which I did for many, many years, put this stuff up to your higher ups. And if they don't see the value in what you're asking for, when you ask for consultants, when you ask for research, go have a coffee with your marketing team and mm -hmm. just terrify them with the possibility of what's going to happen if they don't give you what you want. Dude, she's a psychopath. What the fuck? What kind of psychopath behavior is that, dude? Holy shit. He has essentially made this same speech multiple times. Fucking I'll psychos, man. Of this. In this one, she also does this thing where she's like, haha, it's just a joke though, but not really. Seriously, you should do this. Have a coffee with marketing so that you can absolutely terrify them. What is women eyes? That sounds like a spell from a hentai. By telling them, here's what's going to happen if you don't do this. And I say that sometimes like as a joke, I say talk to marketing and scare them, but consider honestly- Sounds like a spell from like a fantasy, like adventure hentai. Honestly, the possibility that like those people have to sit and deal with everyone who's going to come at them if this is a mistake. They have a vested interest in reducing harm, keeping the sentiment around <coughs> your project positive. And there's a genuine value of inclusion there that's not just ethical, it's monetary. And that makes it for a lot of people in marketing, like I was once, a genuine valid discussion to have very, very early. Uh -huh. And sometimes um, that's actually where you can find your consulting budget. It's pretty gross how these people openly gaslight others, oh, whether so it's weird. other people in general or their coworkers, trying to that's say weird, man. that it's harmful and unethical to not use consultation firms. Isn't that convenient? Hey, if you don't use our company, if you don't pay us, you're unethical and harmful. Her claims that there's a monitor. Dude, I, 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 I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie, guys. I've, I've wanted to do, I've wanted to make my own cons consultation company for the longest time and i actually we all we we were like seriously discussing it at one point uh it was like me ira and julio we were like yo we should make uh, we should make a consulting company because it would be 100 percent worth it for us to just teach people how to like not make their game shit but we, we ended up not doing it but it would have been 100 percent worth it even even if we charged even if we charged like five digits it would have been worth it because we would have saved them millions of dollars benefit are also highly questionable and that's me putting it lightly uh, i mean so the many... problem is i care more about developing like the ttrpg even though it makes less money because if it was about money i would just be a game developer um because because pr prior to streaming and making games i was getting paid 300 dollars an hour doing game development and i just I just don't like it as much. I, I don't like working on like other people's games. Um, I'd rather work on like what I care about. So that's so why I just decided not to do that. Examples of DI related games lately, for example, Concord, Dustborn, SSK, the JL, Tales of Kinzara Zao, that have been absolute financial disasters. Back to Ray's thread, there's part two where she says, games are not falling apart due to some conspiracy. They're falling apart due to insanely high interest rates and poor investment decisions. We're also in a recession. So what exactly is she calling a conspiracy theory? The implication seems to be that she's saying that DI companies are not harming games in any way, that that's just a conspiracy theory, in which it certainly isn't. When you have a bunch of games, okay guys, and they all fucking suck and you find out that there's it, and they suck for a reason that like you know why it sucks and there's like one company that is responsible for creating the situation in which the game sucks well then obviously it's their fault right that said sure they're not like i mean obviously it's not the only reason there's like many other reasons that probably could have saved it but it didn't help it didn't help and they spent all that money making the game less good responsible for a lot of these games failures but they're definitely a factor she also said that gaming companies are falling apart due to insanely high interest rates what? and her evidence backing those claims up are an image of wikipedia where they talk about gaming interest industry rates. layoffs and a second image that talks about tech company layoffs so once again she's essentially wrong on this because it's debatable whether high interest rates or low i can debunk this like literally right now I can I can debunk this right now. Literally right now. New report says Concord costs 400 million to develop Steam charts. What does that say? Does that say zero players in game? 
Oh, Leaflet, that's not fair because the servers are shut down. How much did Dustborn take to develop? How, how much did Dustborn, Dustborn cost to make? 1.4 million plus 150,000 euros. I don't think it's inflation. I don't know. Is it just me? Am I crazy? This doesn't seem like inflation to me. This seems like you suck. I don't... I Low interest rates seems like game sucks. Be more negatively impactful to the gaming industry. But the argument for high interest rates being an issue for the gaming industry is that investment firms may seek alternative investments that are less risky. And when it comes to layoffs, I'm not going to lie. I might I might buy Dustborn. I know I feel I feel I feel a little bit bad about it, but I might do it. I might do it because it'd be 100 percent worth it for me to buy it and play it off the evidence that she seems to be using. I want to play it. I, I, I do want to play it. I want to play it. Star Wars. I have to. I have to play it. Example two. I have to play it. I have to play it, you guys. I have to play Dustborn. The argument is more so that low interest rates can actually cause more video game layoffs because they potentially lead to more mergers and acquisitions, which can then lead to more redundancy and then cause layoffs. Thanks for the follow up. So, Thank you. This woman's arguments are all over the place. She really does not seem to know what she's talking about here. Oh, and she did include a third image, which is this one. Forget to play As you can it. See, this I need to see to you karaoke the horrible song that was memed on for the longest time. Now, to be fair, she also said poor investment decisions decisions by the gaming companies yeah 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 like 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 them they're 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 the bad that's almost like a self-tell they are the bad the bad which is true <laughs> they, yeah, they're, they're they are the bad the bad uh the way, investment it's them for di consultation is a part of those poor investment decisions <laughs> Finally, exactly yeah, things like recession and inflation exactly hey. are also exactly. going to be fact now moving on it looks like she's given up attempting to use evidence for her claims which while that wasn't going well for her at least it was something the rest of her thread just devolves into insults so yeah very angry person here the good news is reading this is going to be really entertaining at least in my opinion so let's see uh what she's <clears throat> seething about next nobody is coming to save you no incels are going to band together to create an immaculate gate kept industry for you wait a minute didn't concord shut down weren't they trying to get rid of uh sweet baby detected wasn't that them we tried to get didn't didn't the gamers actually rise up what is he, what is she talking about what is she talking about you the existential dread you grapple with has everything she wishes this was the case thing to do with the fact you weren't loved enough and that most people find you in no 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 you're 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 the you're the one that's insufferable you're the one that's not loved no matter how much muscle mass you grind out at the gym people will still find you obnoxious what is, what dude what is, why is it always it always goes to some fucking physical insults like what is it what happened to body positivity what is wrong with these guys because you never learned how to listen to other folks lived experiences dude she's completely lost it man she's just so mad now the idea of freedom and independence has been sold to you so that you don't feel any internal responsibility to care for or feel interconnected to others within your the idea of freedom and independence has been sold to you so that you don't feel any internal responsibility to care for or feel interconnected idea of freedom and independence has been sold to you so that you don't feel any internal responsibility to care for amended jesus stop giving yourself <laughs> psychosis we are is, is this projection dude I, I dude there's no way there's no <laughs> what is what is going on in an incredibly fragile state. what is going not on all of us have mental health care but stop freaking lurking always with the conspiracy theory boards man all, always with that shit dude you remember how it was uh, um you remember when it was a conspiracy theory to say that like uh masks didn't work you remember that you remember all those other conspiracy theories oh boy conspiracy theory boards when you don't have support <sighs> oh it's seven indies are gonna gonna carry us for a while shout out to amazing powerhouse indie game devs who work to the dang bone i love y'all okay, okay well yeah indie devs are awesome but my gosh dude what is wrong with this person i love how she also demonizes working out and simultaneously acts like she cares about mental health there's been new <laughs> that's that's true studies that that's true the benefits of working out to not just physical health but also mental health there's also some irony with that because a lot of people at the gym, not everyone, sure, but a lot of people there tend to be super nice, way nicer than she's acting. Anyways, that about does it for this. That's segment. crazy. All right, let's 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 check out the next one. Uh, I'm I'm gonna link, I'm gonna link this to you guys. Uh, I I watch I watch a bunch of uh, Hero Heavy. There's another they pop up on my feed. I like to watch when I'm brushing my teeth. 
Um, let's see the other one. All right, it was this one. The rest of her thread was her devolving into just a barrage of insult attempts mm. that completely flopped because it really just made her look extremely petty. And many people said that <clears throat> she just sounded like she was projecting. At the very least, it was- Sketch says that I was on the Amazon Gold Live show one time and he was real nice. So he seems like a really nice person, honestly. Fortunately amusing seeing her go all rage mode though, provided some decent entertainment for the day. So yeah, that's just some very quick context for anyone who may have missed the prior segment. Although of course, if you want to see my full take, consider watching that for yourself. But now with that context, let's move the on. The funny thing the is, is I feel, I feel, I feel like a lot of the internet nowadays, um, if you're like the type of person that like tells the truth and you're like, actually like care about other people, actually their actual well being, then people usually think that you're the meanest person you're, you're like the worst that it's usually how it goes i think we've got thomas L like if you if you deal in more than platitudes and like you're actually like listen like i actually think like this is bad this is a bad thing that you're doing for like this reason people tend to not like you even though you're like actually it, it's harder to it, it, the, the thing is it, it's so much harder to actually tell somebody like that like the, the real thing that they need to hear versus, you know, just, oh, like, no, everything is like good. You know, if you just keep going, your dreams will come true. All you have to do, you know, like, I believe in you. All you have to do is just keep trying. You know what I mean? Like you, you do all that, that bullshit that doesn't mean anything. You're actually not helping. In fact, you're hindering people from actually like getting things done. Like, dude, I need to work out more. You guys should call me a lard ass, honestly. You guys should. You should be like, man, Leafly, you fucking lard ass. Get, get your ass in the gym. Mahler here saying, I'm the director behind both Ori games, and I don't know who you are and how you were affiliated with Ori in response to that Ray person saying, hey. Yeah, I'm usually, I'm like too busy. Like, I haven't been like, like doing that. I probably should. Folks, I'm Ray. I work in the gaming industry in UX R&D. <laughs> I have a home gym too. I have one. The only thing is my D my, my DDR machine is broken. So like I have like this shitty elliptical and like I don't want to use it because it's boring. It's boring. I gotta just do VR, dude. I gotta do I gotta do that that, that game. What's that game? Uh uh Legendary Tales. I gotta play Legend I gotta play Legendary Tale, man. I'm gonna play Legendary Tales. I'm gonna play Legendary Tales, guys. We're gonna get swole. We're gonna get swole while we kill fucking skeletons. Alright, guys, that's gonna be I now work as an independent media producer and had the privilege of working on the Dota Internationals Yeah, maybe Beat Saber projects. Dude, I hate that game. Rather than the Earthbending VR game, dude, it's so hard. The controls are so like fucked in that game. I don't know what it is. I actually have um have a quest. I might use the quest for that actually. Just like the quest, like fix up the living room, put like a nice carpet there and then just like do some uh I don't do something like Beat Saber or uh, what was that other game? Like, was it Blade and Sorcery or so, so something like that? But importantly for this context, the bottom left image showing Ori. Given the timing of how he's saying this now, I can only presume he just recently saw her unhinged rant. Okay, so get this. As I'm looking at this conversation and recording this video, I see that she's actually just protected her entire Twitter account. That's going to make covering this a little bit more complicated because as you can see, it's also affecting her responses and we're now unable to see them. Got a tab that has not yet refreshed. So while we won't be able to see all of her responses, we can at least see some of them. It looks like she responded to him saying, I worked with Xbox user research. I was the URA for global publishing during 2018 to 2020. Nice to meet you. I also worked on various other titles during my time there, but got a better job opportunity on the Xbox community team. Thanks for the follow, uh, Mega Kingsman. Me. Thank you. Why do we see so many community managers or like community team people who are some of the most unhinged and like angry at everything? Oh, it's Creed sounds really fun too. Recurring theme. Anyways, that wasn't the only response that she made because there's also this one. Oh, I have a question for you. Pressured you? Now she's <laughs> reminding me of that nap person from Godot, where after Asmongold gave a kind response, she then tried to get him in some sort of gotcha. It's funny how these people don't realize that they're the ones acting all crazy, and they try and pretend like everyone else is the problem. Going back to the situation with Ray, Thomas responded to her saying, well, that could explain it. I didn't want to cause you any trouble. I just saw you posting that you worked on Ori and I had no idea who you are. Since you're calling people names online, I thought it was important to inform people that you never actually worked for Moon Studios and that you didn't ever directly engage with anyone at Moon. Always be That's nice so to people, That's so weird. Ray, even those you disagree with. So she just put like a good game in her profile as like a as like a flex, but she didn't actually work on it. While some people were amused by his response there, other people seem like they're extreme. Dude, they're all, dude, they're dogpiling this guy. I didn't want to cause you any trouble, he says, after inadvertently sending her. Well, I mean, he just, he just said like, yo, where's the receipts? Yo, I worked, I worked on Ori and I don't know who you are. So who are you? 
Dude, what, what is what is this psycho shit? Thanks for the follow, uh, McLovin. Thank you. Any game dev that supports Grums ain't getting a cent out of me. Bro, I'm what the fuck? It. It's amazing how upset these people are, simply because this guy wanted to clarify that the woman who recently went viral for making a completely unhinged rant is not directly involved with this. Yeah, she made the unhinged rant, and then she freaking posted a picture of Ori as like, a, I worked in the game industry. And then the guy who worked on Ori was like, I don't know who you are. Can you like remind me who you are? Because obviously he has an interest in knowing like, like, yo, did we work with this person? Like, why are they doing this on his track? Obviously. There are some other tweets that we're unable to see because Damn Ray it. went into protected mode. However, we can also see that Thomas responded to these ones. Saying, Damn, I wish I could see what the posts were. I thought the post was pretty clear and concise. By the way, you're not in the credits on any Ori game. So unless you change your name at some point, based off that context. Yeah, I mean, valid. If like you worked on it, you're like, hey, like, who are you? Did we work together? Duh. Like, well, what the fuck? That possibly Ray has an issue. And then everyone is getting mad at this guy for just pointing it out. Like, I mean, she could, if she actually worked on Ori, like, it'd be easy. It'd be easy to point it out. It would be very easy to prove it. That's what, like, why is she getting mad? Right? Like, if, if this is a mistake and like, you know, Thomas is like, yo, I don't know who you are, but I worked on Ori. I was like, I'm the director. I'm the game game design director on Ori. Uh, I don't know who you are. Like, who are you again? And then like, instead of like being like, well, I'm offended. Like, why not just say like, yo, oh yeah, yeah, I worked there. Like, here's here's who I worked with. Like, this, these are the people I know. You can ask them. Oh, th there should be a trail of like people, like even if it's not this guy, you know, obviously because game companies can be quite big. You might not know someone or you might even forget someone that you worked with. Um, so all, all, all I would have to do is this person would just say like, okay, Thomas, like I worked with this person. I worked with this person. I added them on, I added them on here. Um, you can ask them. And then they would be like, yeah, yeah, I, I worked with them. Then, then, yeah, then obviously like, with the other response that Mahler made. And now the most pathetic thing possible is happening to no one's surprise. Some of the corpo journalists from Kotaku are getting involved. God, that's such a nice gun. It's not a nice gun, guys, it's such a nice gun. Well, quote tweeting Mahler's response and posting this article from 2022 from Kotaku that says, Ori Studio accused of being oppressive, sexist workplace. Developers say Moon Studios, no BS policy, gave founders license to bully and demean. Even if- These game journalists are a fucking joke. Are a fucking joke, dude. Any of the accusations in that article are actually true. It's really gross how these journalists well Well, dude, I, I used to be a games journalist and all I did was teach people how to play Fate Grand Order in Japanese. I was a real games journalist. I was like, hey guys, you guys wanna play Fate Grand Order in Japanese? Like here's how you play, here's a big guide right here, here's the screenshots. Make an account here, use this thing, you know, use a uh, use Q app or whatever. Drag this stuff up two years later using the alleged victims in the article. I'm not gonna lie, I was doing God's work. Your own personal army. Though it's Were you the person who made that guide? I I, I made one of them. I made one of the big guides for that, yeah. Painting a very clear picture. None of the people angry with Mahler seem to have any responsive merit. They're either just like- Yeah, when I, when, I did, when, I did, when I did my little stint in games journalism, all I did was announce the news. I got like a press release and I was like, yeah, so-and-so game company has announced like this new game. And it's like, this is the genre of the game. And like, these are the people working on it. And like, it's, it's slated to come out like on this time, it's gonna be out on Xbox and it's gonna be out on Xbox and Nintendo Switch. And that's, that's all I did. I just did that. Just like article, like here's the facts, like this game coming out, done, ship it, click, publish, next next oh like you know fortnite's gonna have a new patch and then the new patch is gonna have like this new like mechanic like the new mechanics gonna be like this and like um you know uh, there are other games like you know uh, you know previous games have had this mechanic this this mechanic was in PUBG. like maybe it'll be really really fun in fortnite we'll have to see click it ship send that's it that's all i did or reposting this. However, plenty of people would also further defend Mahler. For example, this response saying, it's always the same untalented, useless, lazy, hate-filled people that come crawling out of the woodwork at any opportunity to try and drag someone successful down. I hope he's not stupid enough to fall for it. If they make good games, people will buy them. Madam Savvy getting involved saying, was it oppressive because he said no once in a while to someone? Given that she admits people don't get to choose how she represents them, I see no reason for anyone to take anything she says serious she referencing the kotaku journal however someone would respond to savvy saying i mean it's kotaku so take it with a grain of salt but if true i think that's not a way to talk at the workplace especially when you are ceo including an image um nobody care on the screen cap of work chat shared in a uh, report carl writing nobody cares what you think really followed by my writing wait it's just coral writing nobody cares what you think really followed by my writing lol you <laughs> Seemingly from. Hold on, Mr. Pizzle reports the log meeting. Baller concluded by typing, I really need a. <laughs>
<laughs> That's kind of funny, though. You're That's kind of funny. To which Savvy responds, saying, "It's the worst they have." That. That's not real. even that bad, dude. That's that is that's light. That's some light shit, man. Not only is there zero context, but this is how people talk to each other when they're friends too. The "I really need a woman" remark is probably from a string of jokes being made. The other person retorts, saying, "Sure, friends," but truth is, there is no friends at work, especially if you're on the higher position than your supposed friends. There's no friends at work. Sure, not really a big deal, but still not a good look. And the current final response in this conversation here from Savvy saying, "People will value those words accordingly if that's a red Dude, flag." Dude, this for is you, why you gotta have a culture check when it comes to um working at a game company you have to make sure that people pass the culture check because otherwise they're going to shit up your culture they're going to shit it up and everyone's going to be walking on eggshells for them and it's going to be awful totally okay for me i'd actually hate to work at a place that didn't use that kind of language you can still have corpo structure mixed with friend structure just so long as you have respect for who's in charge at the end of the day but everyone views workplaces different so you saw this part which is some of the evidence that they're trying to use against Mahler. However, there's also a little bit more than that. In this next section, they say that Mahler insisted on having the main character's origin story. I, I told someone at work one time, I, I told them that they were shit. I was like, you're shit, dude. Like, like, you don't know what the fuck you're doing, you're shit. I'm sorry. You're just, you're just garbage. Uninstall, man. Revolve around something very dark. <sighs> and that allegedly Mahler wanted to do this. To yeah, I almost got fired for that one. Motivate the character <laughs> to end up being a very cool character who does- True story. Very Probably cool. not a good idea. I wouldn't, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that to your boss. Not a good idea, but you know. And sure, that's a very dark and very terrible thing to happen to that character. It is just a character though. And many characters throughout fiction- No, because I meant it. I wasn't saying it to be mean. I meant it. Like I meant it a hundred percent when I said it. And I, I even said that later, like later on, like, you know, after I, like, I, after like, you know, I became friends with the person like later down the line, which is actually like pretty funny. Like we ended up becoming pretty good friends. I told them like, you know, like, I'm, I'm really sorry. I was like very harsh, but like, you know, I, I, I meant, I meant what I said at the time. I'm sorry. I just, I meant it. Had equally bad or even worse things happen to them. I think we can confidently say that these journalists. I don't like saying sorry. If I don't, if I don't mean it, sorry, that was, that's probably very clippable. Um, but I, I don't like to say sorry if I don't mean it. I, I feel like it's, it's pointless. I, I don't know. I, just me. It's just me. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like apologizing for shit when I don't, I don't actually mean it because it, it just, it makes it point, it makes it useless, right? Because it's like, if you just apologize for something when you don't even, you don't even, you're not even actually sorry or you actually don't regret it at all, then like, like why even say it? You know, it, 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 it basically devalues every apology that you ever make after that point. I absolutely hate Berserk. And my gosh, I can only imagine what they'd say about my last Hearts of Iron 4 campaign. Anyways, pretty amusing how all of this started once again, because Ray wanted to make that giant unhinged rant. She just really wanted to defend DEI. Gotta defend those DEI consultation firms. Go figure that all of this would attract gaming journalists to run to her defense. Hopefully Ray will have some self-reflection while she's protected on Twitter and realize that all of this was really unnecessary and unhinged. And you know, there's no reason to act like this, trying to bootleg for these consultation firms and all that. Dude, what if you made a game? What if you made a game that was all about, it was like a meta. <laughs> It was like a meta game concept about DEI and the whole game was about like not getting triggered or something like playing a character and then they like get triggered all the time and then you're, you're the whole the whole point of the game is to like try to avoid being triggered maybe, maybe then you could like hire them turn a new lead let me know for the you lived experience all of this in the comments and as always thank you so much for tuning in if you enjoyed my coverage please also consider liking and or subscribing to the channel appreciate you and i'll see you in the next one oh, welcome back <laughs> uh anyway that that was that was that's that pretty interesting um I don't know. I, I I think I think he was well within his rights to be like, hey, I worked at this place and I don't I don't know I don't know you. Like, who are you? Uh, again, it's very easy for her to actually just debunk it. You know what I mean? It it's so easy just debunk it. I feel like it's okay. Uh, I'm okay with apologizing for certain aspects of behavior. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying uh, you know. Again, like if if you like doing that, that's fine with me. It's not really like something where I'm like this is like some kind of grave sin or something like that. It's just it's just a personal preference. So I mean, like I I don't I don't think um I don't think it's like detestable if like you apologize even if you don't mean it because sometimes it's good because it keeps the peace right um <coughs> make a, a game that's nothing but an intersectional chess checklist dude it's like pokemon dude it's like pokemon sisala it's like you do you pokemon you gotta catch them all like all of the checklists you know it's like this sweet baby pokemon game